Our next speaker is Devanjan Sarkar. He completed his master's degree from FRI at Dehradun and is currently a PhD scholar at the Wildlife Institute of India. He has previously studied the northern swamp deer and helped assess the tiger corridor functionality using landscape genetics and modeling. The title of his talk is Tracking the Rainbird, Telemetric Studies on the Pied Cuckoo. Thank you. Over on to you, Devanjan. Hello, everyone. I'm Devanjan from Wildlife Institute of India. I'm a PhD student working here mainly on climate change and protected areas. But today I'll be talking about the project I'm currently working on, uh, tracking the rainbird or tracking the pipe cuckoo using satellite telemetry techniques. Pipe cuckoo is someone migrant to uh, northern India and a brood parasite bird. Brood parasite bird means uh, it lays eggs on different birds and uh, the host bird actually raises its offspring and uh, feed them to the till they are young. Uh, this, this species has more than 40 recorded hosts in its entire range. However, the major host of the bird, uh, bird is mainly babbler and the bulbul. Apart from its uh, interesting uh, brood parasitic behavior, the bird is summer migrant to India. It appears in the northern parts of India and stays till the monsoon period. And this is known for centuries in different folklore and mythology. However, there has been very limited studies on its migration. One of the early studies is done by uh, Whistler uh, in 1928, where he pinpointed observation throughout India and circuit location where it is observed seasonally. As you can see in the map, he has observed uh, locations, uh, he has pinpointed the locations and uh, or the marked them in circles. And the, where the circles are marked, uh, there the species uh, observed is uh, observed seasonally. However, in southern part of India, the species is uh, resident. After later, MD Madhusudan used precipitation data with EBER data to correlate its relation to its monsoon. As you can see, uh, the bird actually started ar arriving in the month of uh, May to the northern India and stays uh, till uh, October to uh, uh, September. Uh, then there's this latest uh, word by bird count where it shows how the bird has its dynamic distribution throughout its range. It still leaves a question, whether the movement path of the species is through the Arabian Peninsula through the landmark, or it takes the sea. To answer the question, we use satellite telemetry to see its migratory route. We use 2 gram uh, solar PDT to understand its migratory route. Uh, it is one of the lightweight uh, satellite transmitter available till date. It connects with the Argos group of satellites. And how it works is the bird tagged with the transmitter. Uh, the transmitter uh, relays the data uh, relays the data to the Argos satellite. The satellite then sends the data back to the processing center. Uh, from the processing center, the location fixes are sent to the user. It mainly the lat long of the data. And apart from some auxiliary information like the class of the data, altitude of the data, uh, things like that. So the end user can the down, can download the data from the Argus website. We started our survey in the May first week, looking for the bird and sites for its missionary. So once you observe the species, so uh, once we observe the uh, observe an individual in a particular site, we uh, uh, kept up the observing the birds for a regular basis to see whether it's coming or not in a uh, certain spot. And uh, we selected site which has a potential for the, the missionary. So once the site was selected, we placed the mist nets at, uh, in different places within the selected site. And we used uh, 32 mm nets as well as 22 mm nets uh, to maximize our chances of capture. And apart from the mist net, we used uh, a model replica and a call. So we faced uh, difficult, different constraints uh, during our entire uh, um, mist netting uh, uh, duration. So uh, first of all was the bird is present only during the monsoon. And regular rainfall and uh, winds actually makes it very difficult uh, for misnetting during the monsoon period. Uh, next difficulty what we faced was the small capture window uh, uh, because within its time frame of staying, only the pre breeding season is suitable for misnetting because at that time only it responds to the call playback, probably thinking it's a rival or a potential mate. So after the pre breeding season, uh, they tend to perch on the higher canopies and usually don't come down. 
then there were instances where the uh, bird slipped through the nets and we are we had to shift from 32 mm net to 22 mm net to maximize our chance of capture and there were times where the bird perches on the miss net ropes as you can see from the picture we finally captured two birds in uh, july 2020 after daily attempts for uh, over uh, two months once captured we took the birds measurement and uh, tagged them with uh, satellite trans we also put uh, color rings on its legs uh, the bird was named uh, chatak and uh, meg to emphasize its relations to uh, folklore and the race and the birds were uh, released at the capture site both the birds started giving locations the day it was tagged however one individual stopped responding uh, after one month while it was still in their nest the second uh, bird actually kept giving the data it started uh, it started its migration uh, from dehradun uh, on in october it started its migration from dehradun in october midweek uh, with one day stop uh, uh, near the radaji national park and then it kept uh, going uh, southward and moved uh, uh, near uh, and had a stopover site for one month at the site uh, b uh, near the maharashtra from maharashtra it went till uh, the coast of goa and uh, it stayed there for one month and uh, at the end week of the november it started uh, move, uh, crossing the arabian sea however the last location we received was near the coast of somalia although the bird was tagged only for a few uh, Months. The study already gave us few new insights. First of all, the bird stays till the month of October, so we assume that the bird, as it is a brood parasite and it doesn't have a parental care to do, so it supposedly should leave immediately after the it has laid its eggs, as it as it's happened in different other cuckoos. But in this case, the parent stays till the month of October, so after that, it started moving uh, southward. the next it follows the uh, it crosses the arabian sea rather than the arabian peninsula which would have been a much shorter route to africa next it stays in the coastal region for at least a month and probably it waits for a favorable wind to cross the sea more studies are required to see the dynamics of sea distribution we studied only in the part in dehradun and more studies can be carried out in different parts of india to see how the bird is migrating from those parts uh i would like to thank uh, dbt for funding our study and uh, this was a part of the i uh, indian biosphere information project uh, from irs thanks to the symposium to give us to give us the opportunity to present our study and thank you for listening fantastic debanjan that was a very insightful like idea about the rain bird because when i joined as a master student at wildlife institute of india our course director dr suresh kumar welcomed us saying that you guys should get your umbrellas because i dare to like understand its movement has been fascinating there are a few questions popping up in the chat box we are short on time though okay so nishan has popped up with the first question where do these birds breed generally uh so nishan can you repeat the question again i mean there's i think there's some technical glitch and number to get it properly so nishan wants to understand where do these birds breed so he wants to know their like breeding ranges Where do the birds come from? I couldn't hear it. Breed, breed. Okay, uh, so uh, they have they breed here in India only. Uh, they have breeding site in northern India, and uh, the southern India population is resident. So uh, India is the breeding site actually. Okay. Charu Sharma has put in that there can be varied dynamics and data for this bird, right? 
as I have like spotted them in Central India during his field work. Uh, yes, their uh, their actually their distribution is quite dynamic, even their movement. So, uh, uh, what are these questions actually? Uh, is it in Discord still, sir? So, Discord is the platform where people are putting questions, and we will be happy okay. for you to answer that. Okay, okay. I'll just we continue the... asking questions to Debanjan. While we thank him for doing this wonderful presentation, he will be available for like more deliberations. Over to Nikita for the next speaker. Thank you.